Okay, everybody. Uh, thanks for, for joining uh, me today. This is, uh, oh yeah, you can use the chat panel. This is Vince with Listings to Leads. And we're going to talk, this is the first rollout call for your office to use our, our program. And we're going to do this in two calls. The first one is going to be on Facebook advertising and lead generation. And some of you may have noticed um, that it's been fairly popular for about a year now to be using property valuation landing pages on Facebook. We have those as a part of the account. But we also look uh, at Facebook from a purely branding standpoint too. And we have a lot of tools that are uh, you're able to use free. They're automatically generated and sent to you. And there are some tools that you might want to boost or run an ad with. So on this call, I'm going to show you all those tools. And we're actually going to run uh, some ads together uh, just so you can see what that looks like. I am recording all this. I am going to upload it to YouTube and I'm going to send it to Rick later. And then, you know, you'll have that as a resource. So if you're taking notes um, and you miss something, I think, you know, you're going to have this recorded. One thing, uh, I'm going to be sending the ID and passwords for everyone to Rick in just a little while after the call. Over here on the left-hand side where it says start your 14-day free trial, do not start a 14-day free trial. The office is paying for this and this just throws a wrench in the works. Up here on the right is a button that says login. And just type in your ID and password there and you sign in. So before we kind of actually look at the tools, I'd like to kind of show you what's here and what are the online resources when you get started. Um, right on the front page we usually announce something and right here is an article that's actually talking about seller lead generation and uh, I'll click into that in a bit but I want to kind of point out what else is here. There's a really cool tool that um, actually another Keller Williams agent from Naples uses so it's right here. I'll probably point out that call that tool later on today. Um, and then down here we have live uh, recording so we're gonna do two together this one and another one on the core marketing tools but we do live recordings every Tuesday uh, at noon Pacific specifically on Facebook and Facebook changes a lot and I think more importantly the kinds of ads that generate leads is always changing and our clients share a lot of that information with us and if you get on that call you're going to be able to find out what's actually working uh, today on Facebook down below, uh, I think we also have uh, some recordings here on ways of building your, your business without listings. There are a lot of tools. So whether you're a new agent or, uh, or a seasoned agent, there's all kinds of tools for you here. Um, if we click outside of that, there is a page here on Facebook advertising. And this is probably the first uh, resource that you'll want to look at uh, other than the recording of this call. There is a video kind of talking at a high level uh, about the kinds of tools to use on Facebook and how they work. And then up here is a link showing you how to run an ad. I'm at, we're, we're gonna do that together. So, uh, but if you forget and I'm going too fast, you can come right here to this. Uh, as soon as you log in, click Facebook and there you go. The other thing is there is a click to join the mastermind group. And I'm gonna send you a link to that as well. And the reason I, I want you to go there is this is where we really communicate very quickly with our clients. We are adding new tools all the time, uh, about every two weeks. And our clients are using them in various different ways. They're talking about how uh, they are using them. They're even posting their ads. And in this case, somebody's showing a letter that they're sending after they got the lead. And there's a whole discussion going on by our clients about how do you convert leads? How do you get a listing lead? And then next, how do you convert them? Uh, a lot of ideas are shared here about how to write an ad. And while I do show you very simply how to run an ad, and some of you may have done that already, uh, how to actually place an ad on Facebook is actually very simple. But how to have it generate, I don't know, 20, 30, or 40 leads as opposed to two or three is really you know, that's a nuance and I'm going to show you how that, uh, that, you know, how you do that. But on this page, as I roll down and I know it's kind of, it jumps around if I look, uh, look at it, too, if, if I jump too much, people share their ideas all the time. They say, hey, I got 40 clicks on my ad, I got no leads or I got a lot of leads and you're able to learn very quickly in this group from our clients. So that's all before you even log in. All right. So before we get into Facebook advertising, I do want to point out 
that there's a tab up here on the left that says listings. And since you're with Keller Williams and we have the national feed for that, we have a dashboard of all kinds of tools to market your listings. And these tools are emailed to you automatically. A single property website, a virtual tour, we auto upload to YouTube. We give you a series of e-flyers that actually get emailed automatically to you. Now I know you've got e-flyers from other vendors or other kind of tools inside of eEdge. None of them generate leads the way that ours do and I'll kind of explain that later. We have a, ser a campaign of Facebook ads uh, and those ads also are designed to capture leads, not just market, not just look pretty, but actually get some leads. Then we also uh, give you a listing landing page. And a listing landing page is specifically designed for advertising on Facebook. Um, gives consumers a little bit of information, but to get more information, they gotta give you their contact info. And that's really the point of our landing pages. Um, you'll notice to the left, we do focus on advertising homes multiple times. On the left, this is CS for coming soon, just listed, active, open house, pending, and just sold. And when you click on the address, there's a whole marketing checklist with all the tools that you can use at that particular stage. When you get familiar with our program, you're going to realize that, yeah, these tools, these tools do generate leads. So it's in your interest to market them at the various stages. If you can, coming soon. If not, just listed. Obviously, open house, uh, perhaps pending, perhaps price reduced, and definitely just sold. To get those tools, you can check the box here to tell yourself you've done it, and you can click this button over here to actually get the tool. But we do email a lot of those tools to you automatically, but that's a really useful place to start is just clicking the address of any listing. And that's kind of the automated stuff. We're gonna get on that on the next call, right? Uh, where I will uh, point out to you though is the landing page section. And when we come into Facebook advertising, landing pages is really where it's at. Um, and why that is, is, uh, you know, we see agents posting a lot of stuff to Facebook and I'm sure you do too. You copy things from YouTube and from Zillow and here and there, and you put it on there and that's, that's awesome. Uh, it just doesn't generate a lot of leads though. It's just like a nice colorful ad and that's cool. But this is where you actually want to start looking. We have landing pages for, uh, Fizbo's, for expireds, for condos for sale, for HUD homes. Over here for property valuation, over here for growing families, homes sold nearby, and you can create custom reports for buyers or for, uh, or for sellers over here. Uh, and then we have them for empty nesters. And landing pages are just a one or two page website, right? They're not like your website. I think you're moving to, to the Playster and you're gonna you know, put a lot of time and build on that. Um, but usually real estate websites have a lot of pages. And those pages are not really designed to capture leads, right? If you look at uh, our Property Valuation Plus page here, you're going to see pretty quickly that that's all it is. It's not given consumers all kinds of information. There's no testimonials. There's nothing about schools or mortgages. It's just like, you want this information? Give us your contact info. That is the definition of a landing page for us, okay? Um, so this one that I just clicked on is to get a property valuation. So. That is actually the one I want to start with. So let's begin, let's go up here to this landing page section and let's begin this like you're going to begin it, which is you're logging in for the first time and you go to the landing page section. What do you do? You come here where it says number two, type in the farm area or sales area. I'm going to type in Little Rock, but you want to have landing pages for all the areas that you grow your business, right? Now, I don't know. Uh, the geographic area of Little Rock, but let's say that right next door is Baton Rouge and you want to create, you, you want to grow your business in Baton Rouge too. Well, first of all, you click save here for Little Rock and we'll give it a minute and then it'll give us a little message that you can barely read. Uh, but what it does is it creates a Little Rock page under every one of these buttons. So now you have a Little Rock FISBO page, you have a Little Rock um, uh, expired page, a Little Rock Growing Family page. And that's the point, you know, we think of it as farm marketing and you're all familiar with farm marketing. You got to get more than one tool. There's more than one thing going on in those particular farms, right? But the first point to remember is you create one for Little Rock, you create one for Baton Rouge. If there's a, per a certain neighborhood or development that you want to build your business in, you type that in there. You just type in the name of the area or the city or the town 
and you click Save. When I click here on Fizbo, just to give you a quick idea of, of a, a simple old school landing page, scroll to the bottom and I got, you can see here it's a little rock. And there's two things you can do on the left, edit the landing page or see it. Let's just see it real quick. And this is a simple kind of squeeze page, right? Hey, if you're selling your home yourself, your, your marketing doesn't need to suffer, what free tools would you like? And people check this box and click next and then the next question is great what's your address right and then they fill that in then the next page is great give us your contact information Fizbo's, uh, you know as you're probably aware are usually handed off to a realtor on average every two in within two months um, and so if you're doing free marketing for them you've probably got a high likelihood of getting that listing but that's not the page we would want you to start with the number one page we want everybody to get involved with is property valuation plus over here on the right all right and there are there are a few property valuation ones but this is the one that i think does the best uh, when i scroll into it i typed in little rock so little rock is now down at the bottom and when we click see landing page this is what it looks like okay now i don't think i've been to little rock but i'm i'm pretty sure it does not look like that picture in the background so the first thing we got to do is we got to customize and edit this page all right. Before we do that, I want to show you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it doesn't look like before we do that. Um, I want to uh, I want to show you how it works. So you get this in front of a consumer. There are multiple ways of doing that. We're going to cover the way on, on Facebook and you type in the address of a residential home, not a commercial home. Right. And this is the only one I know is my house over in California and you click go. And the page takes the consumer to the second page, which shows them a picture of the house, right? And, and that's to give people a comfort level, like, oh, all right, this is like relevant, right? This is, that's my house. And yes, this is a 3-2 built in 1950. So I'm gonna click yes. And we do this to get some buy-in because the very next page is great. We got your valuation, but give me your contact info, all right? A lot of people will go away at this point just like you when you're faced with a uh, a form that you got to fill out online you you don't want to be spammed for the rest of your life and the same is true for anybody else that you're going to use a page for this that's why the page is configured like that to get some buy-in right and you click for report and at this point already even before i said click for report me as the agent i've already got the address that was the first lead the second lead is, oh, now they gave us the contact information. And with that, the consumer got these numbers and I, the agent, get copied on these numbers. OK, um, and that's really the whole point of how this page works. There's some some recent sales. There's your contact information down here. And then there's an auto response that goes to the agent. And of course, all this information goes to you. When you get that lead, the number one thing you can do is contact that lead and say, hey, uh, does that number sound right to you? Is it high? Is it low? Have you done any improvements? Let's schedule, you know, a five minute uh, visit to get, to get let, let me help you get a real number. Uh, I'm probably, I'm sure you're aware that the accuracy, that was a Zillow estimate there, as estimate. And those tend to not be the most accurate things out there, right? They're just, they're just not. Um, however, it allows you to advertise in a way to say, it's free, right? So I'm gonna go over here to the Zestimate Accuracy page. And one thing that, that agents do is they keep this page right at hand. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Um, it's actually on Zillow's page. If I can read, oh, that's, that's not it there. I'll have to find it after the fact because I, I can't quite see it here. Ah, uh, Zillow Estimate right here. Yeah. Um, there is a page here, the green little button, how accurate is the estimate? And this page tells you uh, that they're pretty much inaccurate most of the time, right? Well, almost all the time. Uh, but then it shows you what percentage they're off. This is a page to have handy so that when you get that lead, you can say, hey, here's, here's the accuracy stated by Zillow on their website. Let's, you know, let's have a talk about uh, getting you a real number if you're thinking of selling your home. So as I mentioned, we can click here to say, see landing page, and the landing page looks like this, but we don't want to advertise looking like that. So if you could, 
Rick, if you can type in the chat panel there, what's like a landmark in Little Rock? What's something big that everybody would sort of know? And while you're doing that, I'm gonna click on edit landing page. And River Market, River Market, awesome, thank you. So I'm gonna type in, and this, you, you'll have to do this. Rick, you may wanna do this sort of for the group and put this on a shared doc. Uh, but you'll wanna have a couple of these. So I'm gonna say Little Rock River Market. And I'm gonna do a search on Google. And then I'm gonna click on Images. I am gonna, re I'm recording this, so I'm gonna move kind of fast here. Uh, search tools gives you the size, and we need the size to be larger than 4 MP. That's because that page, as you saw, is pretty big, right? Um, and you could, if you want to get technical, click on usage rights and say labeled for reuse, okay? And that kind of changes it as well because you don't want, you know, to have another realtor go, hey, that's my picture and, you know, I'm upset, right? Uh, but let's choose this picture here that maybe not, in. we'll use this one here. That looks, oh, that's DC. I don't even know how that got in there. I'm gonna change this not, I'm gonna say no filter because I saw a picture there that kind of worked for me. But you'll have to kind of poke around a bit. Um, let's see, and first one. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One second, over here on the left. Makes sense. And is it big enough? Yeah, let's click view image and it shows us the image in, in its large format once it kind of pulls up here. Give it a second. Rick, are you having trouble hearing me? Because I feel, it feels like it's a little bit slow here. Uh, I'm going to save this. Not an awesome, great, thanks. So I'm going to save this picture to my desktop. And then I'm gonna go back to my edit page, right? So I clicked on edit and right here down below the second section, it says landing page image. Choose that and go to desktop and we will have that picture right there, right? And just save it at the bottom. And when you save that, it'll take a second to save. Um, and then it'll take you back to the top of the page and while we're waiting for that, I'll go back over here. Let's see where, and we'll wait for this page. We're almost, should be almost done here. There. Um, just refresh the page. So you don't have to wait, you know, like 30 minutes. If when, when you're making changes in our system, it's pretty instant, right? Now this is ready to market, right? Almost, there's one more change I like to make. Okay, and I recommend that you do this and I'll show you why in a second. We go back to the edit page. There's a section here that says landing page text customization. And this right here says get your answer here. I like to change that to the words get your answer in less than 15 seconds. Because this is all instant kind of stuff, right? You want to get um, people to click and you want to get them to give you their contact information, right? So if I refresh this page now, it says, what is your little rock home worth now? And you can say, get your answer in less than 15 seconds. So this is ready to go, okay? So let's run an ad together. And before we, we start running this ad, I want to explain to you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of running Facebook ads, but it, at Listings to Leads, we are really focused on generating leads and as many leads as possible and all, obviously the highest quality uh, possible. And so what I'm going to describe to you is one, how to run an ad. And I, oh, ideally, you know how to do that. If not, you're going to see it. But then also on top of it to run branding ads. And the reason why I'm saying that is you can run a, a property valuation ad really easy. We're going to do it together today. And a lot of agents do that, but they don't really think of how I'm going to brand on, as well. And when you start branding, the same exact ad starts working better with more leads and better, better contact information. That's really the quality question. So you come here and you go to this arrow. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little arrow pointing down. It opens a menu and click create ads. And you click that and that opens up a little ad manager on Facebook. And give it a second and kind of do its thing. It's almost there. 
and you won't get this message. I run, I have an ad blocker and it's telling me it doesn't like that. What you want to do is right here in the, in there are three columns of, of things to do. The top one is send people to your website. Okay. You want to click that and just, you know, so, you know, we're not sending them to your agent website. We're not saying send them to your agency or your site, none of that. We're sending it, sending it to our landing page. There's a campaign name. Definitely give it a name. You don't want to run one ad on Facebook and think it's going to change the shape of your business. You want to do this consistently. So I would call it, in this case, Value Little Rock, right, in case you're running in different towns. And maybe the date, October 20, is it 21st, maybe. Um, and then click Continue. And when we do that, it takes us to the second page. And this is really the power of Facebook uh, is setting this audience. And if we type in here the location, just type in Little Rock. And it says Little Rock, Arkansas. And it shows us a little map of Little Rock plus 25 miles. I don't know if you can see it. It says plus 25 miles. Change that to current city only. And what this says and what this means is that we are going to... The, the only people who see this, this page, which actually says Little Rock, are the people who are on Facebook who live in Little Rock. They don't have to be your friends on Facebook. They don't have to like your page or know you exist. They just have to be on Facebook. 71% of adults, not teenagers, are on Facebook today. It's probably higher because that was from a year ago. And they spend on average 50 minutes a day on Facebook. So this is a really incredible place to learn how to target those people. And we're covering that right now. You probably don't want 18 year olds to be looking at these ads and clicking your ads. So put your bottom age there that you want. You can kind of uh, do the demographics like homeowners or things like that. I don't recommend you do that in the beginning. I recommend you just, you bracket the area and you bracket the age. That's the, that usually gets everybody where they want. And then as you get better at it, you can, you can kind of tighten it up and change it. There is one area though that I do need you to pay attention to and it's called placements. And you need to click edit placements and you need to click this to say desktop only, all right? Now what that means is Facebook will push this ad on the desktop. I'm, I'm sitting at a desk on my computer and, and that's what it means, right? Obviously, you know, millions and millions of people hit Facebook on mobile. And this page actually is mobile. This is mobile optimized. But it is a three-page process. You saw what it was like. And it's not as great of an experience on mobile because people actually don't like going from page to page on their phone. They can, but we're really not used to it, right? And so we recommend when you're starting to not use mobile. The caveat is, Mobile also includes tablets and iPads and stuff like that. So, you know, sometimes on the weekends, people are sitting there watching the, the ball game or something, right? And they're looking there, you know, they're in the commercials, they're looking through there. And if they see this, you know, if this happens on an iPad, well, you can't, you know, mobile really works, but you gotta test it out first. We recommend starting on desktop only, okay? And from there, we set the budget. There is a, and this is what's similar, whether you're running a branding ad or a seller lead gen ad, always change a lifetime budget, change it from daily to lifetime. I recommend that you do this at least $30 over the weekend, okay? And when I changed it to 30, it gave me a red mark, and that's because there's a minimum of $5 a day on Facebook for an ad. And what I always want you to do when you're running property valuation, at least in the beginning, start on Friday, okay? We're starting on Friday and end it on Monday. It always pushes you a month out, so you gotta kinda correct that. And once I do that, that red mark goes away. Now, if you notice over here, my maximum spend is 30 bucks. It'll be done on Monday. And the daily reach is about, well, it's 1,200 to 3,200. So probably 2,000 people a day. So for 30 bucks, 6,000 uh, 6, people are gonna see that you're a realtor inside Little Rock and that you're offering a, a way to get a free valuation, right? That that kind of goes along to the branding, but we are gonna do a separate branding ad and, I'll, and, and there's a little bit of difference on that. When we click continue, we go to the next page. This is where we sort of configure the, uh, the what the ad will look like. 
and you can skip through all here. Down here it says page and links. I have a, I have a couple pages. You might have a business page. I have like a healthy food page and a music page. So that's my business page. And I want to drive people to this. So I'm going to right click copy again that link. And right here says website URL. Just paste it. When you paste it in, it gives you a little blue box pops out. Click that and that kind of pushes the link inside. And you, I don't know if you can see it. There's some wheels spinning on this page. And it starts to get us ready for the preview of what this ad's gonna look like, all right? And that's what it's gonna look like right there. Uh, what I do wanna point out is this is going to be in the center of the page, right? The center of Facebook. So let me go over here and, and show you what, that, what I'm talking about there. Uh, when we're on Facebook, let's see where I am. There are a couple of columns. There's a left column over here and then there's a right column over here, and then there's a center column of news, right? That's where this is gonna show up, kind of looking like this, slightly different, right? Um, and that's what that is designed to do, okay? So when you, at, at this point, you could actually go down and place the order, and Facebook will give you a message, we're gonna review this, and then we're gonna make it live, right? And they review it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and then, it goes live and then at the end of the ad on Monday, I get a message saying congratulations on your great ad and uh, let's get, you know, uh, this is what happened. This is what you got. And it tells you the reach and the reach is gonna be like 5,000 people. They kind of showed us the number earlier, right? And then they say how many web clicks you got, right? And web clicks means that they looked at the ad Right, they went and looked at the ad, they saw it like this, and it was so compelling that they clicked on it, right? And when they click on it, they land on this. And at this point, when somebody fills out anything here, we're emailing you directly, right? When they fill, they give you the address, we're emailing it to you. When they give you the contact information, we email it to you. So that's kind of what happens. So I wanna point out, that that's like the basics. Like I said, we're gonna do this twice. This is one time. Um, the difference, what I want to point out is what happens when I do that, right? That's, I kind of explained it, but the real question is what kind of results will I get? And some people get like 20 or 30 leads over the weekend, right? Other people get one or two over the weekend. And the difference of that is usually based on a couple things. This picture is so not interesting that people just glaze over it, and this language is our generic language, and it's just so weak it's not compelling enough to click on. That's pretty much it. The other thing, and I mentioned it earlier, is don't make these mobile optimized, not for seller lead gen. Uh, make these on desktop only. Those are really the three knobs that make that happen. So to give you an idea of, of a good idea of, a, of an ad that works, let's go back to listings to leads to our homepage. And when, I, when we logged in, I, there was this pop-up page. I said, hey, there's this interesting article. If you scroll down on our, on our homepage before you even log in, there's the same article, 31 seller leads in two days, right? Um, and there's a couple of interesting articles here. One is this agent just saying, hey, I, got a, I ran an ad and I, this is what my ad looks like. And I ran it on my community page. If you don't know what a community page is, you probably know what a business page is on Facebook. Uh, it takes about 60 seconds to create one. And for some reason, community pages have better reach or sometimes better results. So it's maybe worthwhile testing that out. But if you can't see it up here, the ad looks like this. It says 360 homes sold in Frisco in June. The highest was 960. Now get your home worth free. That, as simple as that sounds, is way more compelling for people to click on than find out your home value, right? And down here where it says text on the left, you can just say, you know, whatever the number is, you, you know what it is because you have the MLS there, right? 400, 400 homes sold, et cetera, et cetera. And whatever I type there in that box shows up above the picture, okay? So that's a blog post. You can see it before you even log in. And, and uh, I recommend that you, you use that language. As I mentioned earlier, 
our mastermind group, our clients are sharing ideas all the time that work there, right? And they're saying, hey, I'm running this ad and I'm getting all this. So you don't have to think up how to write an ad. Our clients are sharing it all the time in the mastermind group. Another great idea that works here is to time something very simple. Click here to get your automated online home value in less than 15 seconds, right? You remember we did that less than 15 seconds. Because this tells consumers or people a number of things. It's automated and online, so I don't have to talk to you, and I'm going to get it fast, right? You also should use the word, not to sound gimmicky, but free gets people to click, right? It just gets them to click like, like that. So that's, a, that's an interesting way of doing it. Other people over here, you can change your picture. You can, add, you can actually change your picture. Some people will put a picture of a home that they recently sold. And the language down here, they'll say, this home was in contract in less than two weeks. Click here to get your free online evaluation now. This home sold, you know, five or 10% above asking, whatever that is. It's, it's relevant to a home that just sold, right? And just turn it around, say, click here to get your free online evaluation. Those are some of the ways of writing ads. And really, it is the language on the ad and it is the photograph that I mentioned that really makes or breaks an ad. You know, you're gonna spend 20 bucks or 30 bucks over the weekend. Maybe you're putting, you know, af after a while, you'll start to realize how this does work. A lot of our clients put in, you know, $60 on the weekend, 20 bucks a day. The more you put in, the more clicks you can get, and the more clicks you get means the more leads you're gonna get. So that's kind of the throttle there. Uh, and that is how you run a seller uh, valuation page. Rick, are there any questions at this point, what we went through it? Okay, I'll wait. Agents who already have an account, will they be able to switch to the office account? Yes, they will. Yes. Yeah. And if they're paying for it directly on the web, we'll, we'll, we'll cancel that charge and we'll just sort of keep it live. Uh, one more thing on this section. And as I mentioned, uh, this blog post. This blog post, the first thing I showed you was a, a, a quick little article of how to create this ad, how to make it look just like that. And you can see right here how to create custom graphics. But down below is another little article. It says 21 seller leads, 11 full sell lead, seller leads, meaning that it has contact information, and one listing appointment in 12 hours. This article is from a team leader, uh, Keller Williams in uh, California, Northern California. So he's been advertising for a while, right? I mean, for, for a few years. And he's got a database of 3,000 emails and he sends out all kinds of great stuff. Well, he finally realized that there is a letter that we pre-written that looks like this inside of his account. And he copied it. He updated these two paragraphs right here. And then he pushed it out. Now, the nice thing about it is that it has all kind. you know, it's got your your Zillow reviews uh, on it on a lead capture web page. It'll point you to your, your property websites, but there's home value built right into it. So when you click on this, it's, point, it's pointing right to your, your property valuation landing page. And since we've been working on this Little Rock page, and we've now targeted the people in Little Rock, but what if I have a database of people that live in Little Rock? Well, I could scroll down here to this weirdly named section. All you should remember is there's some green buttons here. Click view email. And this email is the same article. It's going to have your, your, your logo. You, you edit the information about the local area. And now when it says get your home value now, it pushes the consumer to the Little Rock page, right? So obviously marketing gets more powerful when you're coming at them from different directions, right? If we're hitting them on Facebook with this page and I've got a list of people I can blast out on Constant Contact or MailChimp or Top Producer or something, 
and they're see they're coming to the same thing at some point it sort of works right if it doesn't work the first time the other thing is inside our mastermind group if you click on photos you can scroll down and here is actually a photo we, we, we keep talking about this came from ryan smith uh, an agent um i don't know where he is actually um and but this a lot of agents do this they send out just listen just sold postcards and the nice thing about those postcards is they might have your picture and your phone number and people can call you right but people really don't want to call real estate agents right they, they don't like calling people that they think they're going to get sold on so on the back of his card he put he bought a little url from godaddy right and that little url he forwarded to his page like this so it says, you know, this home just sold or it's just listed. And if you want your home value, just click, you know, type in that web address. And that's just another great way of get, getting seller leads. And again, it's another way of targeting the same area, right? You can do a postcard drop through, through the post office, hitting up everybody in Little Rock. You can target on Facebook for far less money and far less effort, uh, showing them the same thing. And then you can do an email blast like this, all right? So that's seller lead gen. There are more ways of doing it. You probably don't want to hear all those ways, uh, but they are it talked about every day on the mastermind group. So now I'm clicking on the listings page and I want to talk about what to do about branding because what I just showed you how to run an ad, you know, that landing page, th th this thing, it's pretty popular. We are not the only company with a tool like that, right? We are the only company that offers them at an unlimited level meaning you can have one for all of your your areas um and we don't charge you more right i mean the next closest competitor for a landing page like this starts at 60 dollars a month for one page so if you want five you know it's like 300 bucks a month if you want five landing pages in our system just create them by typing in the name of the town or the name of the development and these things work incredibly well right and so a lot of people find us or they find bold lead or prime seller or curator or whatever brevity and they get that page and they copy and they paste it up on Facebook and do just what I just showed you, right? And they get some results or they get no results or, or whatever. Our clients, we talk about branding on Facebook and all of our clients that apply what I'm about to show you always come back to us in a couple months and say, you know what? I'm getting more leads and I'm getting better lead quality. People are giving me more information and their phone numbers. So it's, uh, I love it, right? They're, they're totally loving it. There are two tools that we recommend that you begin with when you brand. These tools are all automatically generated when your listings hit. And if you don't have listings, I'm pretty sure you can borrow a listing. And you can click this grab active listing button right here and it will give you, and you just need to put in the zip code and the MLS ID and click grab and we will pull it in with the photos so that you have all kinds of really good looking tools and all the all the lead capture is built in, right? And right here, I have got an open house, it says OH. So here's my single property website, right? And I want to definitely market an open house, right? Because when, when it's here, it says open house on the right, it's got my logo up on the left, it's got the ability, you know, me to be able to share on the left-hand side. And then it's got this pop-up page that just automatically pops up and gives me a counter. Get me kind of excited that, hey, what is this? This is happening in two days and 14 minutes? Well, I better fill this out, right? And at bare minimum, they're going to know about this. So how do we get this single property website and brand with it? Just copy the link up here, okay? And go back to Facebook and do the same activity. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. I am gonna point out the differences though. The, the, there are, some things are the same and some things are different. So I'm gonna, I might sound a little bit repetitive, but I think it's better to be repetitive than you not understand how this thing works. So we click that, we're creating an ad and it kind of finishes that whole thing. Because I didn't finish the last ad, I kind of stopped before I pressed, uh, uh, publish, it's going to ask me to uh, start a new ad, right? We're going to start over. So it's that little pop up there is because I have, um, stop it, an ad blocker. 
which I should probably turn off. It's going to give me grief like this all the time. Give me a second, people. It's... There we go. I'm going to start a new ad because I didn't finish my ad. And, you know, you, you may get in that point where you're trying to do an ad and then the phone rings and you run out and then you come back and got to start a new ad. But here's what's similar. We're sending people to your website, top middle column. What's different? The campaign name, I'm just going to call it Open Little Rock and October. Right. You're going to want to analyze these over time. You're going to want to see what is getting the most traction. And that's why you give it a little title and people will not see that. Only you see that. What is different also occurs right here. Remember we typed in Little Rock last time? Well, we want to type in Little Rock again. But this time when I click Little Rock and it says out 25 miles, I may actually want to do that, right? Now this one you got to answer for yourself. I'm going to change it here to 10 miles just to show you the functionality. But the point of this is, are people going to move 10 miles or 25 miles to look around at this, right? And also, do you want people 25 miles away to know you're a realtor? I don't know your area, right? I mean, some people driving 30 minutes for business is not an issue. It's the norm. So if that's the case, then you want to change that radius to, to be applicable to your business. All right. Now, again, you may not want 18 year olds looking at it. You, you can use your judgment there. And but here, this is where it gets different. Edit placements. We actually don't need to edit. We want all of we want both kinds. We want it mobile and desktop because people are on their smartphones all the time scrolling through Facebook. Heck, there's probably some of you in that room right now looking at your Facebook page on your smartphone because I'm so boring to listen to. People are in their cars, they're in line at Starbucks, and they're looking at Facebook five, 10 times a day on their smartphone. So when you're branding and you want people to know that you are a realtor and you got something going on, you want to be using mobile, okay? Now, I'm gonna leave the budget at 20 bucks. I'm gonna change it to lifetime like we did last time. And when I change it to lifetime, it changes it to 350. So change it back to 20. And I'm going to say, when you're running an open house, you, you really should start on Wednesday, right? But we'll, we'll just kind of do it for, for what's available here. We'll run it for just a couple days. Um, and again, it's telling us about a thousand people a day are going to see this. Okay. And there's also, it says something here about Instagram. And I'll just tell you, we have not heard a whole lot about Instagram. So I really don't like using Instagram when I'm doing mobile. You can. And if you're building, if that's part of your real estate strategy long term is to build a social media uh, network there, which is pretty easy to do, uh, then leave it, right? But if we're really focused on lead gen right now, you may not want to. Uh, similarly, audience network, I usually, we, we've had a call, Scott and I had a call with Facebook uh, just a few months ago to talk about how to run ads, right, and what's the best way. And they told us do not run it on the audience network. What audience network is, is I've got a phone here, it's got all these apps, right? One of my apps, it shuts down all the apps in the background, so it saves my battery. And when it pops up, it says, hey, you got 50 apps running, click this button to stop it, right? And then I click the button, and right under the button, there's always some little ad there. Right. Sometimes it's Candy Crush and sometimes it's buy some shoes and sometimes it's get your home value. Right. For me, that doesn't seem relevant at that time. And that's what audience network is. So we rec Facebook told us don't do it. We usually tell everybody don't do it. And guess what? Somebody goes on our on our mastermind group and says, hey, I'm running it on mobile with audience network and I got a ton of leads on audience network. So who knows? You got to test these things for your local market. OK, but from here, you set your time, your day, you get your audience. You click and notice, you know, we're, we're looking at about a thousand to fifteen hundred people for 20 bucks. And that's key, right? And from here, it's pretty simple, right? Put it on your right business page, paste in the link here, click the blue button, and it's going to pop in a picture of the home. And it's going to give some kind of lame default language. Right, up to date homes, photos, maps, whatever, right? That's not very compelling. Whatever is compelling about this home, you as a listing agent or showing agent is going to probably have some idea. It's in a good neighborhood, it's got a new granite kitchen, whatever it is, type it 
here in this box, right? And that will show up on top of the picture. And we want people to click the picture, so it better be pretty compelling, right? Underneath it, it says open house. And when they click on it, this page pops up. And when this page pops up, after I think five seconds, this page pops up to capture the lead. So that's the whole point of that, all right? Um, wait, well, I'm lost, okay. So we spent less money, and that means we're gonna get fewer clicks, but thousands of people are gonna see that, right? So the way we really like to recommend to everybody, and certainly you gotta manage your budget, um, is to at least try to run an ad like this for a few days for 20 bucks every week. It just tells thousands of people you're a realtor. On the weekends, invest 30 to $60 over three days to get seller lead gen, right? To get people to click that page and, and, and you find out who's thinking about selling their home. If you do the math, that's a few hundred bucks every month. When our clients do that, they get a few hundred leads every month and those leads are, are, are good enough to convert into business real time. Not every one of them, obviously, but that model continues to work. When, I, uh, when our clients do this, one of the things that constantly comes back to us is people start getting phone calls from random people out of the blue because they say, I see you're a realtor all over Facebook and I need to, to buy a home or I need to sell a home. That's really where you want to be. You don't want to be always collecting online leads. You really want your advertising to, to get your phone ringing. And that is, this is the number one place to spend money to get your phone ringing like that. So that's kind of the, uh, the way to, to run ads and do that. One other uh, thing about Facebook is we've been doing this, we've been creating e-flyers and Facebook ads since before Facebook had advertising, right? You may not know this, Facebook I don't think has been a public company for three years. But the minute they went public, they uh, created advertising to get people to spend money because they now need to tell shareholders that they got them earning some money. And so we've been creating tools to be on Facebook as it's, it started in 2002. It's, it's been a popular area ever since it began. But we created tools that are designed to go on Facebook. And these are free. They show up in your mailbox throughout, uh, through, from just listed, a couple weeks later, the single property website, the virtual tour. If you do an open house, we send you a Facebook uh, tool for open house and pending, even price reduced. And then here, just sold. So let's look at this. And we're, we're going to turn on all the automation over the weekend. You're going to start getting listings in your account, I think, Monday morning. And you're going to start seeing tools like this, right? You're going to see an e-flyer and you're going to see this. And this is a just sold uh, ad that's designed for you to send to your seller. You'll actually get an email going forward saying, would you like to send these tools directly to your seller? And then they give you a place to save the seller's email address and name. But what you want your client to do is copy what is between the red lines, just like that. And you want them to go over to their Facebook wall, not to yours, and just go to Facebook. Let's kind of do, we'll kind of imagine this is what they're gonna do. And paste in what we just copied off of that email. And it kind of goes like that and we'll give it a second. It gives it a nice picture and you click post, right? And the point of this is right here, it says it's it posted by me, right? That's, that's, that's not, that's going to be posted by your client, but the pre-written message says, Hey, our home is sold and we want to recommend you at Keller Williams, Little Rock. Here's your phone number and email address. So a pre-written testimonial is automatically getting sent to your mailbox whenever you change the status to sold on your listings. And if it doesn't happen automatically, just click this blue button here next to any listing and change it to sold or change it. And sometimes it happens automatically, but many times it doesn't, depending on your MLS. Uh, if I click that again, maybe it will open for me. Thank you. Change the status right here to just sold or pending. Just sold and pending, uh, the, the, um, the single property website actually has this is open house. Let's look at the single property website for that home. Where were we? It has a, it has property valuation built right into the landing page, right into the, let's see, into the form. So here's a just sold home. Here's a single property website. 
the Facebook ad that we just pasted there pulls up the single property website. And since it's just sold, the automated pop-up that comes up has a property valuation page built right into it. For some reason, things are dragging here, but we'll give it a second and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Come on. There we go. So right here, sold home prices affect your home value, get your value. So right here in the lead capture form is a property valuation form, right? So again, these tools are being automatically sent to you. You should forward them to your clients. And you, when you get the Facebook ad like that, you get an e-flyer that corresponds. You should call the client and say, hey, I just sent you an e-flyer and a Facebook ad. If you could forward that on to your stuff and you could put that over there, that would be awesome. The reason is, is as much as we love online leads, we all love referrals a lot more. And if your clients are on Facebook, they've got 100, 200, 300 friends that have no idea you're a realtor. And if you start using these tools, they are going to become aware that you are a realtor. And that's the point of that. Okay. So that's enough, uh, I think, for today. I'm sure, you know, your head's probably spinning a little bit. So Rick, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, I'm going to get this up online and I'm going to, we'll, we'll schedule another call to talk about how to market your listings. I will send you some instructions on that after the call today. There's a, a tutorial of what I will be going through. But if you want to kind of get started, it, it'll help you. Uh, but those things, you probably want to start getting started in, in, of getting landing pages set up and ready to market. Okay, you got a question. Not. Hey, are you there? I am here. Sure, okay. Um, one of our agents, Kelly, has a question about one of her listings she put in yesterday. Uh -huh. What's the question? Um, I put it in yesterday and I just had to go out and grab it because it didn't automatically feed in. Mm. Well, you might actually, so usually it kind of depends on what time of the day you put it in the MLS, but just so you understand the process, when you put it in the MLS, it gets swept by KWLS and pushed to List Hub and then pushed to us. That usually takes 48 hours. Okay. And so what will likely happen is tomorrow that same listing is going to come in and you're going to have a duplication. Okay. Right. So, so which one should I delete? What's that? Which one should I delete? The one that you the one well, so the one that you, it kind of depends on what you're doing. So if you grabbed it, let's say you grabbed it today and you pushed out all the tools today all over the internet, right? If you delete right. that, you're gonna leave dead links all over the internet. Do not delete that one. Delete okay. delete the one that comes in from the MLS. Uh, because it's gonna otherwise you're gonna have a bad a lot of bad you know if you took the the tools that we automatically send you and you give them to your client and say hey client forward that on and then and then the new one comes in from the MLS and you deleted the first one well now that client has forward things off and there's all kinds of dead links and that's not gonna look good for you does that make sense yeah okay yeah, if it has not forwarded anything then either one should be fine to delete correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to talk to them once offline here about what Georgia had discussed with you. So we'll get that all square on my end. Okay. And then I'll just go ahead and email me that stuff and I'll follow up with you later on today. Awesome. Thanks, Rick. And thanks, everybody, for uh, making the time to, to uh, listen today. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Dan. Talk to you soon. Okay.